Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Growers. If we do find black leg in our field, what's the next step? Well, it, you've already taken the first step by identifying it because you can make a bunch of decisions for subsequent years on that. Um, if you find, you know, if you find at this point black leg or sclerotinia or root rot at this point, you can't spray anything at this point. There's, there's, there's no point. Um, but you can make decisions for the following year. Like if you have significant black leg in a in a in a particular field. Uh, and if, uh, as almost all varieties are, it's rated R or resistant for black leg, you very likely have a case of resistance breakdown in that field. What that means is that variety is not performing with respect to black leg as it, as it was you know, in, initially thought to. The fungus, the black leg fungus, is essentially learning how to, uh, how to adapt to the food source we give it, in other words, the canola with particular resistance genes in it. And the reason that's happening is because the, the short rotations that we tend to have on canola uh, and perhaps uh, sometimes imperfect volunteer control mean that there's lots of opportunities. So crop, canola crop after canola crop or canola wheat, canola, that kind of thing, means that the surviving fungus in that field can, uh, can uh, shuffle its genes and and uh, come up with individuals that, that can attack that particular variety. So and that will be manifested by high high uh, incidence, high severity of black leg in a, in a field. And uh, you know over the last few years we've been seeing fields go down quite hard, quite spectacularly. So it's it's unambiguous. There's there's you know quite a lot of, of lodging and quite a lot of damage. So what you want to be doing in that case so you've done your di black leg diagnostic, you're seeing that it's not sclerotinia, it's black leg, is you really want to be, A, if you can, lengthening that rotation. So the recommendation that you'll see in, in a lot of literature and so on is, you know, one in four canola rotation. So uh, that is very effective. What that does is it degrades the little stem pieces that, that the black leg fungus survives on. Uh, highly effective. but. Uh, with uh, you know, economic pressures and so on, you recognize or people recognize that you're not necessarily going to follow that rotation. So what you want to be doing in addition to that is changing varieties. And what you're doing in that case is you're giving yourself a chance of giving that black leg fungus a type of resistance genetics that, uh, that the fungus is not really adapted to consuming. And so you should be getting less black leg that way. So it's, it's not really a good idea to be growing the same variety each time they, they have that in a rotation. Also, if your field goes down hard to black leg, you know that you have black leg present in that field and you can start thinking about, and this is not a frontline defense, but it's something that can maybe consider, is there are fungicides that are registered that can be applied the next time that goes into, into canola. So for black leg, you want to apply fungicides essentially at herbicide timings. This is far too late. Any, you know, a bolted crop is, is too late. But if you can apply that at, at that early enough stage, uh, there's a chance that you can, you can reduce that uh, reduce pressure from black leg in that particular crop. Do not rely on fungicides as your only source of defense though. It's, it's kind of a, a secondary measure. And if you've done your diagnostic and it's not black leg, well then you know what to do as well. It's, it's going to be root rot, which is, you know, get good stand establishment, etc., seed treatment, and so on. Um, if it's sclerotinia, well, you know, you, if your crops are lodging, it's too late, but you'll know that, you know, you're a candidate for fungicide applications in that flowering period as well. In Australia, they're doing a lot of work to kind yeah. of mitigate resistance breakdown. Can you explain what they're doing there? Yeah, so, uh, as I, I mentioned before, the, the black leg fungus is adapting to the genetics that we're throwing at it. And so the system that's been developed in, in Australia uh, 
dovetails with this the idea of changing varieties. And what they have is a very nice system of being able to tell producers, well, what variety do I change to? So I just said change varieties. They can actually tell you what variety you should be growing and which ones you don't. And the reason for that is because just because of two varieties have uh, uh, different agronomic traits, let's say, different maturities, does not necessarily mean that the black leg genetics in those two varieties are different. I could, I could inadvertently take two varieties that have similar uh, resistance gene profiles. So what they've done in Australia is they've actually done a bunch of testing to place their varieties that are available on, in their marketplace into resistance groups. Uh, what that means is that uh, there's a set of varieties that are labeled resistance group A, another set resistance group B, C, D, and so on. Um, so, so I know... They can recommend this year do uh, A or B. Exactly. So if, if I grew an A two years ago, I am not going to put a, a resistance group A variety into that field. I'll pick a B, C, D. So I have, I have a big choice and I also know what not to put into, into, into that particular field, or paddock as they call it there, right? <laughs> so uh, that is under development. We just started development of, of a similar system. Conditions in Canada are a little bit different, as, as, as you might imagine, so we have to adapt things and, and see if they work here as well. But that's kind of the, the short to medium term goal to get that kind of a system in place. And you're already working on it now? Yeah. yeah so when yeah. do you expect to kind of have it? Well, we'll, we'll start having the, sort of the first, not, not field results, but the first, I guess, feasibility will be coming out, uh, well, we'll have results probably this fall, early winter, uh, and then we'll continue on through the winter into the next year. And so, you know, talk, to, check in with me next time, or this time next year, and we'll have, you know, some kind of progress to report on you. Uh, Will it be kind of a yearly thing like they do in Australia, like uh, you'll yeah. recommend Alberta producers? Yeah, so someone would have to regularly uh, evaluate, there have to be a, a standard procedure for assigning those kinds of ratings to, to cultivars. So this is still in development, I can't, I can't say what the final format or who's going to be doing everything or you know, what publication will come out in yet we'll to be seen. See. Yeah, but we know it is feasible to do, these, to do this kind of thing, right? Uh, and of course, the breeders and the pathologists, public and private, they, they're continuing to look for new sources of resistance, combining different resistances together, um, because you know we're all aware that this, this is a problem. Black leg is a serious issue that uh, went away, well, seemed to have gone away, but didn't and is now really back and, and it's something that we have to deal with. Mm -hmm.